Today, we're going to talk about when a man says this, or it's actually going to be several things, he's about to break your heart. And I'm really sorry that this is going to happen. Really quickly, I, I want to dive into something, and that is many people feel like they have a pattern of choosing emotionally unavailable men. I hear this from women. I mean, consistently, I hear this over and over and over again. And I've been thinking a lot about this from the context of that we are actually swimming in a sea of emotional dysfunctionality within human uh, dating, mating, or relating, particularly with respects to emotional maturity and, quite frankly, relationship skills. And this is true for men and women alike. So the question is, do you have a pattern of choosing emotionally unavailable men or are the odds just most likely that you're going to choose someone who has poor relationship skills or poor emotional maturity? And by the way, the men are faced with this exact same thing as well. This isn't singular to women's experience about men. So I, I bring this up because I believe it's a pattern if you continually stay in an unhealthy relationship. When you stay, when you when you observe these signs. And you continue to forge ahead. You know, you have this, this belief like, well, if I just love him enough, I'll change him. Or if I just stick it out, I'll just change him. See, you have to take ownership of that. Then, yes, it is a pattern. But at the same time, one of the reasons why I created my private coaching, and by the way, there's a link right there to schedule a discovery call with me, is to actually help you curate those questions based on your personality to determine if someone is right from you literally from the very first phone call. Believe it or not, you can actually assess a lot about a person in one phone call. Now, what are the things that a man could say that will most likely lead to, it's like forewarning you that there's going to be a relationship problem? I think the most common one, and you already know this, is when a man says, I'm not looking for anything serious, okay? Well, if you're not looking for serious, then the question is, what are you looking for? Are you just looking for companionship, connection, sex? If that's all you're looking for, then you have to ask yourself before you go any deeper with this guy is, are you in alignment with your desired relationship goals? So when a man says, I'm not looking for anything serious, if you accept that, believing that he'll most likely change, then you're actually setting yourself up for potential heartache later, later on down the road, or actually very quickly, quite possibly. The other thing I hear, now this is actually, it's interesting because for some women, this might sound like music to your ears. But when a man, after you've been physically intimate with him, after you've been physically intimate, he all of a sudden says, we need to take things slow. We need to take things slow. You know what? I don't understand. By the way, my voice just got high pitched right there. What I don't understand is if you went in like a rocket ship to get physical intimacy with someone, then why would you want to shift that energy of speed? Okay, we're talking about speed, right? Well, what he's really saying when he says, let's take it slow, is like, look, I don't want to invest a lot emotionally with you. I don't want to have you get attached to me. We're going to drag this out. I'm more than happy to get physical benefits from you along the way, but we're going to drag this out because I clearly know you are most likely not the one, but I'm more than happy to play house with you for a while. What I've observed with men who are genuinely seeking a life mate. First off, they don't take it slow in the beginning. They just have a nice, healthy pace, okay? It's like, it's like you're in the, okay, so let's just think you're on the freeway, okay? Someone who's in the slow lane is in the very fart, rain, fart, fart lane, far lane. Someone who's in the fast lane is all the way at the other end. But a nice, healthy pace is something in the middle. So someone who's genuinely serious about wanting a relationship, the pace from the very beginning is actually a healthy pace. It doesn't need to go from radical fast to radical slow. It's like imagining, yeah, the guy you know, got you in bed and then immediately wanted to move into the slow lane. Like you'd be crashing into cars along the way. And emotionally, they're crashing into your emotional well-being along the way. 
So be careful when someone after physical intimacy. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, I want to take it slow because I don't want to invest too much. But believe me, the minute you've been physically intimate with someone, that person's most likely going to want regular sex with you. But then why should the emotional attachment go at a much slower pace? Not to suggest it should be a fast pace, but I'm more in favor of the men that have a really good, healthy pace along the way. They're not pushing for sex right away. And they're not, in and by the way, I, I meant to say this earlier. You ask any man who's happily in a relationship right now, he usually knew within the first 90 days that he actually was pretty serious about wanting to explore something with somebody. He ne they never said, let's take it slow after physical intimacy. That's a common trait. So if you hear this from a man, there's a good chance you're about to get your heart broken. Okay. Another thing that might be a sign. Oh, by the way, in a moment, I'm going to share with you. I talked about what they say, but in a moment, I'm going to talk to you about nine signs that you probably have a relationship that's gonna break your heart. Just give me a few minutes, I'm gonna to get to those nine signs that your relationship is probably going to fall apart or he's gonna break your heart. But another thing a man says, it's not, it's not that he says this directly to you, but he's talking about his ex relationship and he's very charged about uh, a marriage, about an ex-girlfriend. In other words, you can tell he hasn't gotten over it. He incessantly talks about her. He criticizes her. He judges her. He compares you to her. All of these things. That's a good sign if you've already given your heart to a man, but he's talking incessantly about an ex-partner, there's a good chance that he's going to break your heart along the way. And guess what? I know many women as well that the minute you've connected with someone, it's it's hard to detach from someone you got attached to. I know this from personal experience. I know what it's like. It's it's not easy to detach from someone that you had deep care for, deep love for, deep attachment for that person. To detach is, is rather uh, uh, hard. And so it's no wonder there's a significant percentage of men and women who are actually still, I don't want to say hung up on their ex. Certainly there's some people that despise their ex, but if they despise their ex and they're constantly talking about them, oh my God, who wants to hear someone? And by the way, for many people, they have a relationship with an ex-spouse that they can't disentangle from. So you have to pay very close attention. You have to listen. Is this person, and, and by the way, this is the time to ask those deeper questions about their past relationships. Your job is to be a detective. Look, I'm your big brother. I wish I could be there for you on a first date. I'd have my shotgun pointed at the guy's head and I'd say, what's your intentions with my little sister? I'd say it kind of like this. What's your intentions with my little sister? The reason being is it used to be there was a consequence for bad behavior. Look at. I am admittedly, I've been a jerk. I've been an asshole. I've been a serial dater. I've been, a, I don't know if I was ever really a player per se, but there was no consequences for my jackass behavior. And I'm glad, I'm grateful that there isn't. Like I'm grateful there isn't some man with a shotgun point in my, uh, sh shooting my ass because I was actually disingenuous with another woman. And disingenuous doesn't necessarily mean, you know, intentional manipulation. It simply could mean, look at feelings are fickle things. We can feel amped up on testosterone and oxytocin and dopamine and serotonin and estrogen, just to name a few. And we can go out of control with our emotions. Many of you heard me talk about that I have a, a I'm a recovering anxious attachment style. I ain't uh, and for those who are not familiar with the book Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller, I highly recommend reading this book. By the way, there's a link below to all the books I recommend. Why I'm bringing this up is that, you know, our behaviors aren't necessarily sometimes even within our control. So I know you can criticize men, but I'm here to say most men are good guys. They're just bad daters. And believe me, folks, I spend a significant amount of time looking for the silver bullet for everyone to just do this one thing 
and you're going to experience this juicy, delicious, healthy, happy relationship. I hold space of optimism for every one of you that it actually exists, that it exists a really healthy relationship for you. I want you to hold that vision for yourself right now. I want you to hold that vision of optimism. I want you to set an intention, God, universe, spirit. I want you to act as if I'm in a juicy, delicious, healthy, happy relationship where we have amazing off the charts chemistry for, with one another. And it's, I'm not talking about that radical love attachment style chemistry. I'm talking, we just are really into each other. And we also have amazing communication with one another. And we can banter for hours and hours at a time. And when we have conflicts and differences, we can resolve them with ease. And our lifestyles are blendable with one another. And we share the same values and have the same vision for where we see our future. And we have the emotional maturity to build the deep roots of trust through social activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork, building skills, both in our personal, our professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to us either moving in together, getting married. God, universe, spirit, I hold that vision for myself. I hold that vision for everyone listening right now. Let's be optimistic that that actually is in your vortex. So I said to you in a moment, I'm gonna share with you nine signs He's most likely going to break your heart, but I want to address one more thing that a man might say that could put the odds in your favor that he's going to break your heart. And I'm sorry, but it's the men who cut themselves down. You're too good for me. I'm not good enough for you. I'm not enough for you. See, I believe that there are some genuinely wounded men and women alike who don't feel fully capable for a relationship. They want it deep down. Their little kid inside of them deep down wants a relationship. At the same time, they are so deathly afraid of abandonment. They are so deathly afraid of, of being enmeshed with somebody. They are so afraid that they're going to lose themselves to another person that they put up walls of self-criticism, of self-contempt. I see this with men. I see this with women as well. See, sadly, we have a deeply wounded population of human beings. And I'm going to invite everyone to, if you follow my channel and you've done the work, if you've read my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, Spiritual Work. There's a link below to get a copy of all the books I recommend, my book included. Then I think it's, it's a moral imperative that you ask some deeper questions very early on to sift out the men who are capable of leaning into a relationship versus those that are stuck behind a wall. So what are some of the signs that your relationship is doomed and he's gonna break your heart? I think these are, there's nine of them here. I have the one, things have been rocky without any resolution. If you're starting to see friction between two people, See, the vast majority of people who don't know how to resolve conflict, resolve conflict will fade apart. I mean, fade away, excuse me. So if it's been rocky without any resolution, that's a good sign that it's about the relationship is about to end. Number two, he's spending more and more time away from you. He's busy. Sadly, we, we can use this as a, it's kind of a buffer. Like if we just start to slowly, and I, I think it's unintentional in, this, in, the, in the speed of this, but let me just spend a little less time, a little less time, a little less time, create a little bit of distance. So when you pull the trigger, and I'm sorry to say it that way, pull the trigger that the relationship is over, it's because they've already created some space, believing that that's going to help you with the detachment. Unfortunately, once we're attached to someone, it is so fucking hard to detach. I mean, believe me, you know, some people take years, if not decades, to get over a significant relationship. So it's no wonder that, you know, there are a lot of human beings unable to go deeper. And this is why I'm such a big advocate for you know, invest, like, I shared this in a video before because I have a great deal of respect for Lewis Howes. And he tells the story how one of the early questions he asked his now 
fiance is would you be willing to do therapy or counseling or coaching as part of our co-creating of this relationship? Now, it's great that we hear that from a man, but it doesn't have to be the man. It just has to take one person to initiate that. And if someone's not willing to do that, then why would you want to give your heart, let alone your body, to someone who isn't willing to work deeply into the relationship? So number two, he's spending more time away from you. Number three, he cuts back complimenting you or giving you affection. If you notice that the compliments have started to wane, if the affection has started to wane, it's in the same genre of spending less time with you. When you notice, you know, listen, we men can get lazy. You know, we do a lot. This is why I've said to you, if you've watched my channel before, romance is, you know, a romance-based way of dating sets everybody up for failure. I think romance should be reserved for people in a relationship, not as a way to enter into a relationship. So let me repeat that. Um, romance is reserved for people in a relationship that are building a relationship versus an entry point into a relationship because it sets you up for failure because, you know, a person can romance you, get physically intimate and stop romancing you and stop complimenting you and stop giving you affection. And there's a good chance you're getting set up for heartbreak when that happens. Number four, you barely talk to him. This is for those long distance dynamics. All of a sudden, the communication starts to become non-existent. And the, and the thing is, with a long distance dynamic, it's perfect. You know, like all you can do is stop communicating. There's nothing that person can't drive to your house. You know, when I was a teenager, <laughs> this was in high school, I actually had this gigantic crush on a woman. And I drove out to her house I just sat there and looked at her house as if somehow I was telepathically communicating with her. You can't do that when you're in a long distance relationship. You can't drive to someone's house and just be there. So what people do is they just begin to cut back on communication. And that's one of the disadvantages of long distance dating. Number five, he cuts back on sex. Yeah. I've heard this from women. This is where a man doesn't initiate the physical intimacy. He's no longer into the... In Has this ever happened to you where a guy has just cut back on sex? That's When that happens, it's usually a sign he's about to break your heart. He's about to end the relationship. I'm, I mean, I mean, not to suggest that some men, as we age, as those of us who are late baby boomers, early Gen Xers, you know, unfortunately, our equipment doesn't work as... as steadily as we wished it could. But I'd say we still have a fair amount of libido, hopefully, but certainly it's going to wane a bit as we age. And so, but if there's a real cutback on the physical intimacy, that's a sign he's about to break your heart. Uh, number six, he's always in a bad mood when he's around you. He's always in a bad mood. Now, sometimes that can be circumstantial, but that's usually a, a subconscious act that this person is trying to create distance from you. So when someone's in a bad mood, it's hard to get close to them. And I think that's a preparation for possibly ending a relationship. Number seven, he gets annoyed at you when you give him affection. You give him affection. He just gives, leave me alone. Get off of me. When a man starts doing that, that's just a sign that the relationship is literally on hanging on. It's not even hanging on on the thread. Someone can't accept your physical um, affections. That's a good sign that it's the relationship is over. Let's just face it. Number eight, he no longer prioritizes you. All of a sudden, everything else is a priority. His children are a priority. His work is priority. His golf game is a priority. His friends are a priority. All, we went from being you being a priority to now everything else is a priority. That's a good chance he's about to break your heart. And number nine, number nine. Am I doing that right? Number nine. You have more disagreement, more and more disagreements with them. In other words, you no longer see eye to eye on things. It's just, sadly, you know, everything I've just shared is pretty typical of people that are married that just kind of fall, you know, drift apart. But this is true for those early stages of the relationship too. When people start to have disagreements, this is the time to work on your shit if you really want a fully 
curated relationship. But if you're starting to have more and more disagreements, you stop seeing eye to eye with one another, there's a good chance this relationship is on the skids and he's about to break your heart. So look at, I wish there was a way I could say, just do this one thing and everything would magically work out for you. But unfortunately, it doesn't exist. There are a lot of different things you need to do. The first and foremost thing, for those of you single and looking for love, by the way, reach out to me and schedule a discovery call with me. But um, first and foremost, I invite you to have an optimistic point of view. Because through optimism, you have a greater chance of success, even though I'm pointing out all the things that could go wrong, okay? Number two, curate a bunch of self-love for yourself. I, I really want you to embody, embrace personal development, self-help, and spiritual work, because that's a pathway to happiness, whether you're in a relationship or not. And then what I teach is discernment. So again, there's a link right there to schedule a call with me, okay? I teach discernment, and discernment, actually, when it's fully activated, you can operate on intuition, and my clients have great intuition because they've done the inner work to be prepared for those men who are misaligned with them. And our goal is to find someone aligned with us. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know if it is. Post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if you want to connect with me directly in the show notes, schedule a discovery call with me. Find, uh, join my group called Midlife Love Mastery. Find me on Instagram. Join, get the books I recommend. Um, get my free gift. It's all in the links below.